And they laughed and they laughed and they laughed and they laughed. Hey, and welcome to Sea Life. I'm Daryl Chesser. Thanks for joining us. Today I'm going to begin a series that my mom actually suggested, which is I'm going to read from my trusty iPad, as you can see the light on my face, uh, from my trusty iPad. I'm going to read about uh, some writings I've done in the past where I just posted them on Facebook during my daily reading. And um, so I thought, well, let's just start to read and just see, because they ministered to me, and that's why I posted them to start with, is it was stuff that was speaking to me during that day. And I thought, if it's speaking to me, there's probably others, because the Word of God is of no private interpretation, and it is, it is for everyone. So uh, today, the name of this uh, re writing is Sarah Laughed. Let's begin. Three men show up at Abraham's tent one day. When I say men, I may have understated who they were just a bit. Abraham recognizes quickly that they are something differently, different than he'd ever encountered before, and he offers them a meal. But they are here on another matter, and one visitor asks Abraham this question. Where is Sarah, your wife? Abraham answered and said, she's inside the tent. Then one of them, another one of the visitors said, I will return to you about this time next year, and your wife, Sarah, will have a son. Sarah was listening to this conversation from the tent. Abraham and Sarah were both very old by this time, and Sarah was long past the age of having children. She, so she laughed and laughed and laughed silently to herself and said, how could a worn out woman like me enjoy such pleasure, especially when my master, as they called him that time, my husband is also old. He's like 99 at this time, Abraham. Then the Lord said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh? Now, Sarah had just laughed to herself. But God knows everything. And he said, why did Sarah just laugh? And then she said this, God said this, why did she say, can an old woman like me have a baby? Is there anything too hard for God? That's what God asked Abraham and her. And then he declares, I will return about this time next year. And Sarah will have a son. It can be age, it can be sickness or poverty or education or a vast array of, yes, God is great, but can he do what I need right now uh, situations in your life today? I know I have, I know you probably do. We're men and people, we're women and, and men of faith, children of faith, and we believe God. But I mean, almost we, we face a lot of things where we get to choose, but can he do this? God is trying to tell us in these verses that there is no mountain high enough, there is no valley low enough, there is no river wide enough to keep God from getting to you. Wait a minute. Somebody should write a song. Oh, wait. Never mind. Uh, I think they did. Many dreams and desires have been, put, have been put aside because of our bodies, our age, our income, our health, our economy, our education, our circumstances. They have convinced us that it's too late for us. We may be tired of the fight or we may not even have noticed that the years have slowly constricted our hope for God's fullness in our situation. If God was going to do it, we say, he would have already done it. It's a common thought in all of our heads. Sarah had already been dragged through the wilderness by Abraham in his quest to find some magic city whose builder and maker was God. She'd been given to kings to be in their harems, and they'd spent, her and Abraham had spent years grooming a servant in their household to become their heir. 
She had even given her own servant girl to Abraham for him to, well, you know, so that they could have a son to fulfill this promise. Uh, that didn't go well, as you probably know. And now, when she is old and Abraham is old, some man comes to the tent and tells her she's going to have a baby next year. <laughs> you bet she laughed. <laughs> you bet she laughed. Okay. Okay, preacher. Okay, prophet. Okay, televangelist. Okay, you guys, you know, you know, Daryl. <laughs> I like listening to you, or I don't like listening to you. I think you're, you know, clever, funny, stupid, whatever your thing is. But seriously, you don't really believe that. I do. I think most of us can identify with what Sarah must have felt about that man's pro proclamation. I mean, what? I mean, I'm barren and old, and my husband is old. He's 99 years old, and now you say, no, uh-uh. It's just not going to work. But God. But God. But God. I'm here today to encourage you to look up, to lift your vision higher, to look at the man, Christ Jesus, who is speaking words of bringing forth, who is saved and healed and spoken words of his great love for us. Maybe you will laugh at the thought of everything Changing of vision returning, fulfillment realized, prayers answered, faith restored, or simply joy returning to your broken heart. Is it possible? Yes. Yes, it is possible when your hope and faith is in our Lord Jesus Christ. All of his promises, all of God's promises are yes in Christ Jesus and in him, amen, through us to the glory of God. God gets glory when these promises are realized in you and I. Sarah and Abraham did have that promised child, just as God told her. Hebrews 11 tells us, Through faith in God's word and in Christ, also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past the age because she judged God who promised faithful. Therefore, there sprang from, even from one, Abraham, and him as good as dead, as many as the stars of the sky in multitude, and innumerable as the sand which is by the seashore. Because she judged God faithful. She laughed. Yes, she did. But she still stayed with it. Romans 4 tells us, God, who quickeneth the dead, and calleth those things that are not. We don't see them. They're not in our... They're nowhere to be seen or felt or smelt or, he or heard or touched. Things not yet seen, such as healing, provision, joy, hope, etc. You have not yet seen them in this situation. But he calls those things that are not as though they are. He begins to call those things into existence. Already were here. That's how he sees these things. Abraham and Sarah, against all hope, believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which had been spoken by God, by the word of God to us. So shall thy seed be. That's what God had spoken. Abraham believed. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body, now dead, 99 years old, when he was about 99 or 100 years old, and he didn't consider the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, in God's word, in Christ, giving glory to God and being fully persuaded that what God had promised, he was able. He, God, not Abraham, was able to perform. And therefore, that in God's eyes, according to the scriptures, was imputed or given or credited, accounted to him as righteousness. No, not his works, not Abraham's deeds or works. It was his belief that God would finish, that he could do, and he would finish what he started. That is what is righteous to God. You want to be righteous? 
Abraham was declared righteous because he believed God's promise. That promise ultimately, of course, is Jesus Christ and the cross of Christ and the resurrection and him as Christ and Savior. That promise. And in, all of, in him, all of these other promises are finished. Let me get, I'm almost done here. Let me get down to Philippians. Philippians tells us, I'm confident of this very thing that he who has begun a good work in you and me will perform it. He will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. That means until the day Christ returns and to take us, until the day he comes back, God is able to complete the work in us that he's begun because he loves you. It's his Holy Spirit doing it. So in conclusion, let me tell you this. Sarah did laugh at what God promised. I have in my heart. I mean, but when the son finally did show up, when interestingly, interestingly enough, they named this son Isaac. And the word Isaac means laughter. Laughter. And they laughed and they laughed and they laughed. Because of God's great love and his grace, we will once again laugh too. We will once again laugh. We will once again breathe the air of God's grace and joy and liberty. So go ahead and laugh. <laughs>